The bigger they are, well, sometimes the funner they are to build. <laughs> Hey, welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are going to take a look at maybe the second biggest, depending on if you count wingspan or height, <laughs> kit from Forge World. This is the Warbringer Nemesis Titan. It came out in the holidays of 2018. I think the initial print run was somewhere around 300 of them, judging by the certificates that folks have registered over on the Titan Owners Club. So that being said, it took less than a month for them to all completely sell out from Forge World at about $1,500 each. Now that price tag, I'm not defending it, but I'm not gonna really touch on it much because if anything I've learned from our Warlord Titan video, everybody has something to say about the price tags at Forge World, myself included, of course. But we're not here to talk about price tags, we're here to talk about hacks to put this thing together and the craftsmanship they're in and some of the design gotchas that I noticed uh, from putting mine together uh, over you know a certain amount of time. It wasn't a one, two, this was a, this was a several month collaboration build uh, to get it just right and learn what size magnets fit where, which we're gonna tell you about, so stay tuned for that one. And also just kind of some work throughs in uh, gotcha areas that, that I learned from and some pieces that I broke off it that I kind of wish I, I didn't and I was following their instructions. But it is what it is. I think it's gonna turn out great once we get some paint on it. And uh, uh, hopefully this video will help you assemble yours or you know get you in the mood to work on maybe not quite as big of a project, but something still pretty cool as well. So jumping over to Forge World's site, uh, you can click on Warhammer 40K and then under Titans, there's there's a section for Titan Builder, but that doesn't give us quite uh, the, the look and the pieces that I wanted to kind of show you. But you can see the big major Titans right here. There's four of them for the Imperials. And then of course the Warhammer Nemesis uh, right here as well. Now the Nemesis Titan, they have a builder where you can kind of switch out the weapons and get a package deal. Or you can do it all a la carte, you know, buy parts right here, which you can see they come with the, uh, the body and the Quake Cannon on top. And then you've got some other different options once you start scrolling down for the Reaver weapons right here. You can't see my mouse. For the Reaver weapons right here. And these actually will fit the Reaver Titan now as well. They've re-engineered it. And it keeps scrolling down. You can see the Nemesis, uh, the Mars Alpha head. And I think that is pretty much everything. So this particular kit right here, you buy the body, it's gonna come with the Quake Cannon on top, which is interesting uh, to note. Let's see if we can pull this up right here. So this is $1,260, $1,260. Uh, you can get the whole bundle, I think for 1,500 with two arm weapons and uh, the head plate right here. Now something to note, let's see, can we spin it? No, we can't spin this one, but that's okay. The Quake cannon on the top and the ammo hoppers on the back, which I don't think we're going to be able to see in this particular uh, image here. I thought there was a 360 version of it, but I guess not. That actually, or maybe this is it. There it is right there. Okay, cool. We'll let, 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 let that load for a second. So right back here, these ammo hoppers, uh, these actually magnetize together and slot into uh, the back area. And also the Quake Cannon uh, is on kind of a, a pivot, a turret, so to speak. And that actually is removable. And so are these, which leads me to believe that potentially at some point, Forge World is gonna come out with um, a sort of a different Titan here, right? And all the AA guns up here also can be removable as well. So you might see this chassis get reused with a different um, dorsal or top weaponry uh, kind of option package. Now, pretty much everything on here is made to be magnetized. I had to uh, get a little creative with uh, the wiring right here, which I'm gonna show you as well on the one I assembled, because you can actually magnetize these bits as well uh, to slot in different arms. So there's four different arms, so why not I mean, you might as well pick them all up, right? I feel like at that point, you're spending this much money, you might as well get all the options you can, I feel like. Uh, some accessories that you're gonna have to make yourself, uh, which you can get either from the decal paper or potentially uh, photocopying, photocopying color uh, printouts or copies of 
the uh, the Titan banners right here out of the Horus Heresy books and then affixing them to really thin plastic card. And once you do that, you can actually put a wave in the card itself just by using a little hair dryer, which you're probably gonna have to use on uh, this kit together anyways, because let me tell you what, some of these armor plates are gonna need to be heated up and bent out. Um, some of, especially around the weapon areas right here, some of your wiring as well, and some other areas that I might not remember right off the top of my head, but we'll mention once we get into uh, the actual assembled model itself. So here it is, all assembled. It is ginormous. I think it stands, I just measured it, 20 inches tall to the top of the Quake Cannon, which, by the way, like I said, depending on how you assemble it, this will actually move with magnets on the inside, which I'm gonna show you uh, the breakdown on all the magnets. But moral of the story is, you don't wanna glue anything down, you don't have to, because this whole thing can move all of the parts, all of the little guns and everything on here. Even the weapon arms themselves can rotate and you can also pull them off and attach them using uh, these little wires in the back right here as well. So we're gonna go over all of that, but I wanted to show you kind of the big picture here. Now, one of the things too is you wanna glue as minimal amount of things as you can. Actually, all of these bottom plates, which I'll show you in a second, are not glued on. They just kind of slot right in because all of this was designed using uh, some really good computer technology right there, as well as the larger pieces up here that are gonna go across and things like that. So we can paint all of that separately and then attach it uh, for the final assembly after everything has all of its paint because otherwise, if you don't take any sections, it's a very large project. Now this is the approximate configuration of all the armor plating once you go to glue it onto the Titan itself, which um, like I said, painting this separate and doing some friskets and things would be pretty good. Now there's also other parts here that I just touched on that aren't uh, actually glued on so they can be painted separately and all of these parts just kind of slot off. These uh, little back pieces right here go on the backs of the knees and then you've got armor plates for the head, armor plates for the torso, armor plates for the shoulders, of course that big armor right there. Uh, then I even have uh, the void shield generators and the railings that aren't even attached yet or put on just so those can be uh, painted separately. Now one of the cool things about this Titan is that the armor legs actually lock together with those little notches right there, which is pretty cool. So try not to assemble any as much as you can so that it can all be painted separately. And if you haven't seen our videos on how to paint trim with Sharpies, you may wanna check that out as well because you will save a ton of time laying down your base coats with Sharpie markers on this. And I have models from five years ago that I used Sharpies on that are just fine today as long as you seal it. Uh, that will save you a ton of time with a project like this. Now to break down all of the different magnets that you're gonna need for this one right here, uh, I have a list, I have a cheat sheet, so to speak, but one of the things that you're gonna want to definitely magnetize right off the bat, that's the easiest to explain, is probably the arm sockets right here. So these bad boys here, we used a combination of washers. We used a one half inch uh, inside diameter, so that's a one inch diameter washer right there by, I think it's about 1 16th, and we used two half inch magnets actually drilled out and put those inside right there. And then on uh, the socket wires right here, we used quarter inch magnet and a 3 16th inch magnet as well. So you're gonna end up needing two sets of those, two sets of those for each arm right there. Uh, unfortunately, to show you this, we're gonna have to flip the Titan over, so I'm gonna have to reposition and do that. But before we get to that, I want to show you some of the other parts that are magnetized while we have it right side up. So this particular AA mount is pretty neat because this will socket into here. And like I said, showing you in uh, the video back there, and I didn't magnetize these because they actually slot, slot, you know, sock, socketed in very well, but those are quarter inch magnets. You know, we'd actually need 20 of them, and I didn't glue them in because this, believe it or not, strangely enough, actually sockets in. Um, if you're gonna manhandle a lot, I would definitely probably uh, just go ahead and magnetize that, but just for everyday use, you probably don't need it. Another cool feature, and you can actually buy this by itself, is the head right here, and you don't have to glue on the top 
or even this front armor plate right here. So you can paint all this stuff separately. But one thing to note, if you glue in the chairs, you're not gonna be able to glue in the pilots. I found that out uh, by mistake, unfortunately. But you can see in there, it's a very cool, highly detailed cockpit and we don't have enough light but if we did you could see in the back right there there's a hatch that presumably goes into the, the inside right there but magnet wise you're going to want to uh, use four on each so a total of eight of the quarter inch magnets right there i think you're supposed to use them in those little wires but yeah, as you can see right there from the strength and the rigidity of it, you really don't need to on uh, the cockpit. Now, all these parts right here, as long as you follow the instructions, are going to rotate freely. So the two nipple guns and the one butt gun, actually, which I'll show you here in a second when I flip this over, uh, rotate freely and you can kind of have fun uh, with that right there. And that being said, let's talk about the Quake Cannon for a second before we flip it over. So the Quake Cannon will actually stay in place and hold its pose if you glue these together um, with a little bit of tension. Now, I have two half inch magnets on each side. There's a socket for the mount and also the gun itself, which was pretty neat. So that actually will hold it and allow it to slide. This is not a piece itself, this is the magnets uh, allowing it to kind of slide up and down and hold position. And once it gets primed, it'll hold it a little bit more. I imagine once it starts to get the uh, particles of the, the primer bonded in there around all those areas. So it actually takes a lot of magnets to attach, uh, to hold the force of the and the weight of the weapon arms right here. So we actually used half inch magnets, half inch diameter magnets. There's two in there and eight quarter inch magnets almost in a revolver style pattern right here. And what those do is those actually attach, let me find my gun over here. Those actually attach, uh, which one was it? Oh, this one. Those will actually attach to this washer so they'll be attracting to the washer and then the magnets will attack track to each other in the center right there. And those two little wires will socket in back here into those areas as well, giving it extra strength on the back side and extra support in the middle. So you can actually, when you attach them, it'll wiggle a little bit. So you can kind of go pew, 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 pew with your guns, which is kind of neat. I mean, who doesn't want to go pew, pew, pew with their guns? So you can see here, you get a little bit of rotational uh, arcing right there. And it allows you to flip between any of the weapons. I have uh, the Gatling Blaster right here. And you can see that the armor plate is separate. So we can glue that one on and uh, the turbo laser as well. So why not, right? The hips or the torso is actually magnetized as well. Just one little 3 h inch magnet goes in there and then also in the top uh, that will actually sock it in and give it a little bit of strength but i believe the instruction said that this was actually designed uh, to hold its weight kind of a force of gravity center of mass type deal here but you'll notice that there's a notch which is why we had that angle of rotation on this right here. So this will only rotate so much about, what is that, about a 90 degrees because of this little notch right here. Now you can take that, you can notch that out or cut it off if you want to, but then you're gonna run the risk of if you turn it too far, it might fall over on its side. So I'm, I'm okay with it being the way it is in there. You can see the buck gun I was talking about, the Mahler, Mahler bolt uh, rifle action and that actually will uh, allow the defense of the rear right there. So those are the biggest magnets. Now let's talk about the AA guns for a second. Here you get a better idea of what's going on on the top of the Titan with the Quake Cannon pulled out. There's little steps right there. Uh, also, you can see some staining. That is actually blood. <laughs> You you will give blood uh, to you, any anything this big that you work on generally, whether it's uh, from your skin cracking to slashing your fingers with exacto blades. It's just bound to happen. It's a natural part of life. I don't think any of my large builds I haven't bled on at some point. So <laughs> yes, that is blood. I know somebody was going to ask. So I'll just address the 800 pound elephant in the room right there. Now inside of each of the sockets of the AA gun, you're going to see uh, the place to put magnets. And those are quarter inch magnets on uh, the inside or oh, excuse me, those are 5 16 so they're bigger than a quarter inch. And then inside the guns themselves, which you can't see because there's no light, there's actually quarter inch magnets. So what's gonna happen is, not only do these just like lock into here, but they'll also rotate as well, kind of like the Quake Cannon does uh, inside of this, 
but then also up and down. And here you can see the quake cannon loaders. These don't articulate, but they look pretty, pretty cool. And this is the parts that would slot out. Like you pull these out, you pull the quake cannon out if they ever sell uh, additional weapons up uh, to put kind of in here. And something else I wanted to show you, which was more of a lesson learned about the quake cannon, is there's supposed to be some rails right here. And unfortunately I glued those down first. And then once we were putting these supports on here with all the magnets and trying to hold it with a little bit of tension and force, those things just shredded themselves. So I'll be honest, that might be something that you want to glue on uh, very, very last. Now, you won't really notice it. I mean, you might not have noticed it from this angle that that was actually part of the assembly that's missing right there. Um, but unfortunately, they are missing. Uh, they are shredded and they shot off in different directions as the weight of these supports at some point when I was trying to glue them all together. Uh, just kind of imploded on them so kind of a little bit of a crappy design in that regard or maybe uh, just the instruction book to put those on at the end but I mean it's it is my fault and I messed that one up but if that's the the only bad talking point I have about this whole assembly uh, I feel like that's a win because overall it seems like this thing was designed a lot better than the warlord titan um which i put two of those together so i'm pretty happy to say that this one was a lot easier to get together very much um easier to magnetize and customize and leave the panels off because they have all these parts and all these socket areas right here that you can kind of see where all of your parts are going to go and these actually are already pre-socketed in so he would look like he kind of missed leg day if I didn't socket those in, but the rest of the stuff won't sit on there uh, with their weight or uh, without any glue, so we didn't glue those on. So now you know it's big, but just how big is it compared to the Warlord and the Reaver? So as far as size goes, it is roughly about the size, maybe a little bit bigger than a Reaver Titan. These are the computerized or CAD designed uh, Reaver arm parts right here. These are the older ones that were designed by hand. And you can see very minute uh, differences between the two, but these are not gonna socket on the same uh, between the Reaver and this guy right here. As you can kind of see, this design doesn't lend itself to that design. And I think the Reavers were actually changed now. Um, but this is a much, 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 much older one from, uh, I think this one's about 10 years old, if I had to hazard a guess. So it's not going to stand up as far as the design goes, but they, I mean, those two Meltas look pretty much exactly the same, but when you start looking at the different pieces and different things, you can tell they're definitely different. Moving on to something a little bigger, <laughs> there's the Warbringer next to the Big Daddy Warlord Titan, and yeah, it kind of comes up to the head, give or take. Uh, with the shoulders and everything, it's still going to tower over slightly uh, the Warbringer, but once you start putting on the armor plates, it's going to be very similar in size uh, to the Warlord right there. And you can kind of get an idea for exactly how big these monsters are when you put a little Horus Heresy uh, Mark, what is that, Mark III? Mark III Marine up there, even though he's on a raised platform. It definitely looks small once you zoom in off of these gargantuans right here. So a fun build. I can't wait to get some paint on this and uh, get it all glued up and finalized uh, together right there. But uh, let's run down the magnets real quick for you out there that might need uh, to magnetize this Titan right here and we'll get on out of here. Here's my cheat sheet. So each arm is basically gonna need a half inch inside diameter washer. I believe it's a one inch total diameter washer, two half inch magnets glued on the inside of each weapon and also up into the arm socket. But speaking of sockets, a, a 3 16 inch magnet and a quarter inch magnet for the hose in the back. These are all 1 6 inch high. So whatever the diameter is, they're going to be 1 16 inch. Uh, each of the arms is going to have two half inch magnets, eight quarter inch magnets in that revolver style fashion and then the reverse for the sockets one three sixteenths inch and one quarter inch right there in the head we already talked about that eight quarter inch magnets the hips are going to be two three eighths inch magnets the aa guns the mounts themselves which actually attach to the titan are going to be four five sixteenths inch magnets the guns eight quarter inch magnets because you have to uh, attach that to each of them and by the mounts i mean this part right here. So those are 5 16 and then the guns themselves, you're gonna need eight of uh, the quarter inch magnets right there. Quake Cannon is four half inch magnets and remember, when you're attaching those, you need to put a lot of tension. I actually used a C-clamp 
um, very carefully not to damage any of the uh, detail work on there so some of the rubber grip and then the ammo pouch or the ammo sockets in the back the quake cannon articulating loading arms 20 quarter inch magnets right there although it does stay pretty well you you might want to magnetize it but it is a, a daunting endeavor because there's five in each piece and five in or ten in the body itself so 20 quarter inch magnets haven't done it yet not sure if i will but that is exactly what you'll need you, you probably should to be honest you don't want those pieces dropping off they're very fragile so that is it for this one thank you all so much for hanging in there with me if you have any questions about the build the warlord build we have two videos up on that one right there I haven't done one on the reaver because it's, it's a little bit older i'll be quite honest but uh, if you have any questions about the paint colors or anything like that or uh, magnetization tips, tutorials, you know, hit me up in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them when I see them come through. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.